our current dating market is totally screwed up. Thanks to the feminist influence on modern society, we have women that are walking around that wanna be more like men, and men walking around wanna be more like women. And it's just not working. Both sides are lonelier and more depressed than ever before. And rather than just complaining or throwing the towel in, us men need to stand up and take responsibility and make some dang changes. And in today's video, we're gonna look at some hard data, we're gonna get grounded in God's word, and we're gonna outline a full plan to overcoming the strongholds that these pink-haired, hairy women have put on modern dating. So I need you to focus in, take some notes on this video, and get ready to drastically improve your dating life. So there are three main problems that have been caused by feminism. The first problem is there's been a devaluation of marriage, and casual sex has been normalized. According to a study on relationships in America back in 2020, over 65% of people who are non-religious saw absolutely no issue with sex outside of the confines of marriage. And that's pretty shocking. It's no secret, people are having more sex than ever before. You've got dating apps like Tinder, Bumble, Hinge. You also have social media where the hot girl that you went to high school with can post pictures of her cleavage and her butt and get flown out to any area in the world by some rich guy and get thrashed all weekend. I know it sounds vulgar, but it's the facts. All over social media and regular media, women are encouraged to show their bodies and be a boss babe. You don't need no man, you can do whatever you want. Post whatever you want, do whatever you want. You don't need anybody to tell you what to do. You do anything that you wanna do, you can just do it. And as a direct result of that, women are having sex with more men than ever before. But the real question is, is that making them happier and more fulfilled? No. <laughs> It's not. In fact, it's doing the exact opposite. We have more women that are on anti-anxiety medication and antidepressants than ever before. And as Christians, we know that our self-worth doesn't come from outside factors, validation, likes, social media, any of that crap. And we also realize as men and women of God that marriage was designed by God for a specific reason. And sex was designed to be within the confines of a sacred covenant with God in marriage. And anything outside of that is never gonna work. Like having sex with random people is not gonna make you feel the way that you think it will because of the way that modern media and our society has influenced you. Hebrews chapter 13 verse four says, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterous. Problem number two is that gender roles are completely blurred and there's been a total defamation of masculinity. I want you to think back to the last time you saw an ad on TV or even like a modern sitcom. Think about the father or the man, regardless of what scene it is. How is that guy represented? Is he a strong, like burly, masculine man that's intelligent and purpose-driven and competent? Or is he a bumbling buffoon idiot? You're right, it's option number two. Our society has done a full psyop to make men look like absolute buffoon morons that are incompetent and unable to make their own decisions. And not only that, but big corporations like Disney have completely brainwashed men into thinking that they can be this like scrawny, feminine, nerd type guy and still get the beautiful woman and that you can win in life being a total soft shell of a man. Like modern men are now these feminine soy boys that take absolutely no responsibility for where they are in their life. They're weak. They have no drive, they're addicted to substances, to corn, to social media, to video games. They get nothing productive done and then they just play the victim. And they think that one day they can continue doing what they're doing and they're gonna get a wife and a good job and everything and they can just continue to get absolutely nothing productive done in their life and make no tangible progress towards their goals. I don't need to go and you know work out and build a physique or grow, grow deeper in my relationship with God or, or actually work towards progressing in my career. I can just go and beat off to corn. That's all I need to do for the day. And one day everything's just gonna work out. That's literally what the modern man, even the modern Christian man, some of them believe that. And it's total garbage. Women are having to stand up and become these masculine like leaders and career focused women that are not happy and men just wanna be a stay at home dad. What a freaking joke. Ephesians chapter five, verse 23 says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, his body and is himself its savior. A lot of modern men don't realize that the man must be the leader of the relationship. And if you're not first submitted to God, then how do you expect your wife to be able to submit to you? You have absolutely no direction. You don't even know what you're doing. 
You have to submit to Christ first, and then that way, your woman can submit to a competent man who's following after God. Because whenever you follow after God and you seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, you will have a clear path. You will know what to do for work, how to carry yourself as a man, where you're gonna bring the relationship. You're gonna know all these things instinctually through God. And in that way, your woman's gonna feel comfortable with submitting to your leadership and your authority. But the problem comes in when men have no direction, and like I said, the woman has to step up and take control of things, even though most modern women, just with the way that they're designed, are very indecisive. And they don't wanna be put in that spot. <laughs> like you have the feminist, career women, masculine, like CEOs, but they hate their life because God created them to be a mother, to have children, and to take care of the kids. And that is what gives them the most fulfillment in their life. But we've all been psyoped and lied to and fed this garbage that has completely destroyed almost every aspect of our lives and our society. The third problem is there is rampant confusion for God's design for both men and women. There was another major study that I'll go ahead and link below that found that most young adults completely reject the idea of being a male or female. Like we really have people walking around that want to identify as a toaster. They don't wanna be a man. They might wanna be a woman or a toaster or a cardboard box. <laughs> it's ridiculous, like it doesn't even make any sense. But the Bible says in Genesis chapter one, verse 27, that God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now you may be watching this video and thinking, what are the solutions? Like, stop telling me about all the bad stuff. Like, what do we need to do? Step number one is you, as a masculine man of God, need to protect your mind from the lies, the secular lies that they're trying to shove down your throat, especially when it comes to sexuality. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, to flee from all forms of sexual immorality because all other sins that a man commits are outside of his body, but the man who sins sexually sins against his own body. You need to flee from sexual morality. Don't just like play around with it and try and maybe avoid it every now and then. You need to run from it, do whatever you need to do to stay away from it. That includes watching corn, watching dirty websites, scrolling on social media late at night and engaging in any form of sexual immorality with your girlfriend or with a girl that you're engaged to and do not allow the world to shape the way that you view sex and marriage. What I would do if I was in your spot is you need to fully pursue purity and also surround yourself with other strong Christian men that are like-minded, that are all pursuing celibacy and purity in the same way that you are. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, that iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And we need to surround ourselves with a strong community of Christian men to hold us accountable to the commitments and the responsibilities that we made in our personal lives. Step number two is you need to be unapologetic in cultivating and strengthening your traditional masculinity. Do not buy into the modern lies that you see whenever you open up social media and they talk about a, a strong Muslim guy like Andrew Tate. I get it, he is a very degenerate personality, but he is masculine. You can't even fight me on that. Every time you open up an article about him, they're completely demonizing him and lying to you about him, calling him toxic, a misogynist, all this crap. And it's just not true because that dude is a man. He thinks for himself, he makes his own decisions. He has a good head on his shoulders relatively other than him being a Christian. He has a purpose, he's focused, he works hard, he makes good money, he's in good shape, all of these things. God designed men to be masculine. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 says, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men and be strong. And step number three, you need to ground your identity in Christ above all things. Do not let culture define who you are, what you do, the things that you think. Christ alone must be your ultimate identity. Colossians chapter three, verses one through four say, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Stay in the scriptures daily, surround yourself with good Christian men, and focus on cultivating strong masculine values and principles. Look to Christ, look to strong biblical figures to see how they behaved back in the day when there weren't all these feminists and social media and all this garbage. Back then, men were men. Even if you look 50 years ago, men were men. They were leaders of the house, they were providers, they were protectors. Like the reason we're in this position is because our fathers were not strong enough men to guide us and to lead us and their fathers, and they're not strong enough because their fathers were weak fathers and they weren't present in the home. They were struggling with alcohol abuse and beating their wife and whatever. And that is not at all the way that God intended things to be. 
But as a masculine men of God, you need to be in a state of assuming responsibility, regardless of what happened and how you came into this world and your parents and all that stuff. Because a soft man plays the victim. A real man stands up to the plate and says, regardless of what happened, I'm gonna take responsibility for who I am, the way that I think, and the decisions that I make moving forward. You cannot just stay in the past. If you had a bad dad or maybe your dad wasn't around or you were raised by your mom and you don't like the way that your life is going and you feel that you are effeminate and soft, like that's totally fine. It's your decision on whether or not you stay in that spot and just eat crap for the rest of your life. If you want a better life, you figure out how to make it happen and what you need to do to become the masculine man of God that God has created you to be. Our culture may be confused, but that doesn't mean that you and I have to be. As Christian men, it's our job to suit up with the full armor of God and to reclaim our masculinity. It's not gonna be easy, but it is a fight that's worth fighting for, for the glory of God and for the future generations of men that are still to come. And if you're with me, click on that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.